Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of Third Girl by Agatha Christie. So uh, I've got a whole bunch of Agatha Christie has come in the post recently because of my sort of reselling on uh, on eBay. And um, I've been using that to stock up on the Agatha Christie books that I want to read, but for whatever reason I haven't got to, you know. So here we have Third Girl. I'm going to read you the blurb and then I'm going to go through and uh, share some of my thoughts and my, my notes. It'll be quite a short review because I don't have too much to say about it, to be honest. Three girls shared the same London flat. The first worked as a secretary. The second was an artist. The third, who came to Poirot for help, disappeared believing she was a murderer. Now there were rumours of revolvers, flick knives and bloodstains. But, without hard evidence, it would take all Poirot's tenacity to establish whether the third girl was guilty, innocent or insane. So, first tab, and I remember it's about ejaculations. So, um... So basically somebody goes to Poirot to ask for help and she meets him and uh, she goes I really don't want to be rude but there it is you're, you're too old I'm really very sorry she turned abruptly and blundered out of the room rather like a desperate moth in lamplight Poirot his mouth open heard the bang of the front door he ejaculated nom dun nom dun nom which means name of the name of the name <laughs> I know in some of the uh, I read Sherlock Holmes uh, Hound of the Baskervilles in French and I think one of the things that they used there was Nomdun Peep, name of a pipe. All right, <laughs> I agree with Ariadne Oliver here. So she uh, tails somebody. She's talking to Poirot and she says, uh, and I've been sitting at the table next to them, only she's got her back to me. And anyway, I don't suppose she'd recognize me. I've done things to my hair. Anyway, oh, actually it says Anway. There's a spelling mistake. Anway, they've been talking as though they were alone in the world. And when they ordered another course, baked beans, I can't bear baked beans. It always seems to me so funny that people should. And then Poirot's like, never mind the baked beans. And I'm like, no, baked beans are terrible. Ariadne Oliver is right, as usual. <clears throat> so we have this quite worrying doctor. If this was my doctor, I would not be particularly happy. So this patient says, I'm afraid they might. Might what? Shut me up. Dr. Stillingfleet raised his sandy eyebrows and looked at her. Well, well, he said. You seem to have some very curious ideas about doctors. Why should I want to shut you up? Would you like a cup of tea, he added. Or would you prefer a purple heart or a tranquilizer? That's the kind of thing people of your age go in for. Done a bit yourself in that line, haven't you? She shook her head. Not, not really. I don't believe you. Anyway, why the alarm and despondency? You're not really mental, are you? I shouldn't have said so. Doctors aren't at all anxious to have people shut up. Mental homes are far too full already. Difficult to squeeze in another body. In fact, lately they've been letting a good many people out in desperation. Pushing them out, you might say. Who jolly well ought to have been kept in. Everything's so overcrowded in this country. Well, he went on, what are your tastes? Something out of my drug cupboard or a good solid old fashioned English cup of tea? Wow, those purple hearts he was talking about, I'm pretty sure that's morphine slash heroin. So he just was like, oh, yeah, you're mental. Yeah, have some heroin. And then we get... Dr. Stillingfleet again. He's, uh, right, sit down there, make yourself comfortable. Do you smoke? Well, I... Only reefers, something of that kind. Never mind, you needn't tell me. Of course I don't take anything of that kind. I shouldn't have said there was any of course about it, but one must believe what the patient tells one. He's nuts, this doctor. Interesting character, though. And he does definitely capture this, uh... I don't know, his outlook of a certain generation, you know? So this bit here... Obviously fairly problematic, especially for me, I, I find. Um, so we get, um, someone must have come in from outside. Why, nowadays, that's how all the burglaries take place. People walk in in the middle of the day, stump up the stairs, go into any room they like, rifle the jewel box, go out again, and nobody sees them or cares who they are. They probably look like mods or rockers or beatniks or whatever they call these chaps nowadays with the long hair and the dirty nails. I've seen more than one of them prowling about. One doesn't like to say who the devil are you. You never know which sex they are, which is embarrassing. The place crawls with them. Why do you need to know which sex they are? And Poirot has, Poirot has this assistant, or I quite like her name. She's called Miss Len Lemon, not Lennon. And um, <laughs> I, I like the way she thinks, because this is the way I think too. So we have here, um, today I have much to do, Hercule Poirot announced, as he rose from the breakfast table next morning and joined Miss Lemon. Inquiries to make. You have made the necessary researches for me, the appointments, the necessary contacts. Certainly, said Miss Lemon. It is all here. She handed him a small briefcase. Poirot took a quick glance at its contents and nodded his head. I can always rely on you, Miss Lemon, he said. C'est fantastique. 
Really, Monsieur Poirot? I cannot see anything fantastic about it. You gave me instructions and I carried them out. Naturally. Bah, it is not as natural as that, said Poirot. Do I not give instructions often to the gas men, the electricians, the men who come to repair things, and do they always carry out my instructions? Very, very seldom. Yeah, people are shit at following instructions and it does my head in. Well, like, there's a character called Mrs. Louise Charpentier and um, she's just Louise Carpenter, but she likes the, the way her, her name sounds French. Sounds like something like Doris would do in Charles Heathcote's Our Doris books. And we get this sort of thing on madness. Funnily enough, he uses the phrase batty for madness, which we, you know, I have heard before. But uh, I hate that word because I remember at school, and I was, I did this as well, like everybody did this, secondary school. You'd always call people like, oh, you batty boy, which basically was the same as using like gay boy as an insult, you know. It was one of those things that everyone did. And, you know, we were kids, I suppose, and it was a different time. But yeah, I definitely still feel a lot of shame that, you know, we did that. But yeah. Resterick would not have used the word mad, even in his thoughts about his daughter. Mentally disturbed was the term that everyone had preferred to use. The other word that had been used of Norm, more, the other word that had been used of Norma had been batty. She's a bit batty. Not quite all there. A bit wanting, if you know what I mean. Were daily women good judges? Poirot thought they might be. There was something odd about Norma, certainly, but she might be odd in a different way to what she seemed. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about wherever the hell it's gone. Oh, it's I'm leaning my phone on it to film this, so I can't show you. Uh, but three, third girl by uh, Agatha Christie. It was all right. Um, some of the characters were a little bit cliche. I mean, it's quite late on into Christie's career. And um, I don't know, it's Poirot as well. So I'm not that keen. Although Ariadne Oliver was in it and she actually gets up to some right old adventures. And uh, she's one of my favorite characters. So that did help. I would say it's not the perfect place to start if you're new to Christie, but if you, uh, you know, if you want to check some of her work out, it's fine, I guess, if you see it going around. I mean, I think uh, there's a reason why I haven't got to it yet, and that's that nobody really talks about it, and it's not in any of the charity shops. So, you know, you probably won't see it going around secondhand, but if you do, why not try picking it up? I gave it a, like a 3.5 out of 5, which is pretty, you know, pretty standard run of the mill for Agatha Christie for me. So there we have it, that's what I made of Third Girl by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon on another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.